the severity and the amount of time this tornado or these tornadoes spent on the ground is unprecedented. Right now on Spectrum News 13, rescue and recovery efforts intensify after multiple tornadoes sweep through several states where crews stand with the cleanup efforts of all of this so far. Then the spread of the Omicron variant here in Central Florida. We're going to talk about where it's been located and what it could mean for our case spread. And then there's a former president in town. What tonight's event at the Amway means for the bigger picture, the future of Florida politics. Sunday afternoon, and we're so glad you're joining us here on Spectrum News 13. I'm Julie Gargata. All those stories coming up in just minutes, but first, a quick check of your Weather in the Ones forecast. Meteorologist Maureen McCann with you here at the top of the hour. We'll head to the top of the Citrus Tower for a view out over Claremont. And this was a scene that we couldn't even see anything from this morning because of the fog. But now they're into the afternoon, sun and some clouds mixing. Some thicker cloud cover over North Florida dropping in with our next front. Embedded one or two showers. It's going to be a low rain chance for today, but a few of you may need to open the umbrella with the low rain chance going forward the next few hours. Temperatures will range a bit from north to south as that cooler air arrives, or slightly cooler air, should I say. I'm going to break down all those temperatures county by county for you. Coming up with your weather on the ones, I'll be back again at 11 past. Crews are ramping up operations, digging through debris after multiple tornadoes swept across the middle of the country. This all happened on Friday night. You can see just some of the destruction here. FEMA is assisting with relief efforts as President Joe Biden has approved the Kentucky governor's state of emergency request. So far, dozens have died with many loved ones still missing. I know we've lost more than 80 Kentuckians. That number is, is going to exceed more than 100. Uh, this is the deadliest tornado event we have ever had. I think it's going to be the, the longest and, and deadliest tornado event in U.S. history. Phone and power lines are still down in multiple towns. Crews will still work and continuing their search efforts throughout this week. Let's take you now to Mayfield, Kentucky, where Spectrum News 13's Angie Andrews takes a closer look at how residents there are looking for signs of life the first Sunday after the storms. First Christian Church in downtown Mayfield is a shell of its former self. The roof, it's gone. Bricks tumble to the ground like building blocks. But it's Sunday, and on Sunday, there's only one thing to do. Despite the fact that our sanctuary is demolished, the central place where we gather, a communion table, survived. It is undamaged and unscathed. Pastor Milton West didn't miss a beat with the sound of heavy machinery in the background and destruction all around. His parishioners took a moment in his parking lot to take a breath before facing reality once again. We're, we're thankful that we're alive here today. In Mayfield today, the overall goal is to get organized and just start with the cleanup process. Many people just don't know where to start. We're just thankful to be here and we're going to thank God for life. See you. Thank you. And FEMA will be here throughout the day as well as members of the National Guard. Just so many resources really from all quarters of Kentucky are headed here to the Mayfield area. On scene in Mayfield, I'm Angie Andrews for Spectrum News. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is offering the Edwardsville, Illinois community support after a tornado tore through an Amazon warehouse there. Six warehouse workers died, 45 others made it out to safety. I, I just couldn't imagine being at work and the building just collapsing, just falling down. And we work hard out here every day. That could have been any one of us. Now the Edwardsville Fire Department says the search will continue until all those warehouse workers who are inside are accounted for. State and federal officials are coordinating search and rescue efforts as the president, Joe Biden, promises to provide whatever resources are needed. This is likely to be one of the largest tornado outbreaks in our history. The federal government will do everything, everything it can possibly do to help. The National Guard is on the ground assisting those in need. The president says that at some point he plans to come to Kentucky to survey the damage. 
Meanwhile, Central Florida agencies are standing by on the ready, ready to help Kentucky, Arkansas, and surrounding states with search and rescue efforts. Our firefighters here, of course, know a thing or two about storm damage. The Seminole County Fire Department's Urban Search and Rescue Task Force has 120 members. They've been deployed in the past to Texas and Louisiana after hurricanes, some really big storms. They also went down to Surfside after that Champlain Towers condo collapse earlier this year. Lieutenant Matt Jane says he is ready to go if needed. Go in there with a good head on your shoulders and rely on back on your training and you go in there with a good group of guys that trains a lot. Um, you, you get the job done and get what needs to be done and you see the good. You see the people and you see how they react and you see how they're going through, you know, what could be the worst time of their life and they're nothing but appreciative to you and that makes you feel good and you just keep on trucking. Their work just incredible. The team has not been asked to help out yet, but they could be on the road in just a matter of four hours from the time they get notice. So if you're looking at all these heartbreaking images and thinking, man, I really want to help like we do, uh, if you're looking for reliable sources to donate through to help those affected by the storms, head to our website. It's mynews13.com or the Spectrum News app. There we have a full list of organizations accepting supply and monetary donations. You can also find live updates as crews work. All new this afternoon, at least three people have died after several buildings collapsed in Sicily, Italy. So far, three others have been rescued. All this happened in the town of Ravenusa, and officials say an explosion was triggered by a very large gas leak. Fifty people have been left homeless, and search and rescue operations are ongoing. The first traces of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus have been detected here in Central Florida. The city of Baltimore Springs saying the variant was discovered in wastewater at a plant on Thursday. They also detected strains of the still circulating Delta variant. Medical experts say the best way still to prevent a greater spread of the variant and the virus is through vaccinations. Early in vitro studies clearly indicate that boosters increase antibody titers against the Omicron variant. So if you're concerned about SARS-CoV-2 in general, and certainly about the Omicron variant, first get vaccinated and then when eligible, get boosted. So far, no local hospitals in Altamont Springs have reported any patients with the variant. Wastewater testing can detect a variant up to a week before a person feels symptoms of the virus. So where do we stand in terms of Omicron cases across the U.S.? You can see the states highlighted in green are where the cases of the variant have been reported. You see Florida is indeed highlighted. Medical experts are still working to test how easily this variant spreads. Former President Donald Trump is making a stop in Central Florida today, this time not really in the form of a rally, but his camp calling it a history tour that's hosted by Bill O'Reilly. Spectrum News 13's Brandon T. Jones is at the Amway Center with a look at the significance of events like this in terms of political capital. Political experts are saying the I-4 corridor is still a key target for political campaigns ahead of next year's midterm elections. We caught up with Aubrey Jewett, an associate professor of political science at the University of Central Florida. He says today's events will have the former president focusing on connecting with his supporters, not trying to win over new ones. Jewett tells us this event is a combination of branding, making money, and potentially getting his name on the 2024 ballot. For President Trump, he was a business person, you know, before he got into politics. So when I saw events like this being set up with Bill O'Reilly, you know, it just really did remind me that Trump, first and foremost, was usually a business person who was trying to make money. Jewett did say he does not expect any big announcements from the former president, but does anticipate he may tease what's to come for any potential political future. Among the topics being discussed at this event is the former president's political stint in office. On scene in downtown Orlando, Brandon T. Jones, Spectrum News. The G7 has a message for Russia, de-escalate its forces near Ukraine, or there will be massive consequences. They say there will be, quote, common and comprehensive response if Russia attacks Ukraine. Several world leaders, including the U.S., have already threatened Russia with sanctions. Over the past few weeks, Russia has sent thousands of troops to the Ukraine border. Moscow denies having any plans to attack Ukraine. 
A Kissimmee woman suspected of killing her own mother is now in custody. Natalie Marie Gonzalez, you see right here, was arrested on charges of first-degree murder on Saturday following an investigation into what police described as a suspicious death at a home on Windy Dune Court. We're still working to learn more from police about what led up to this woman's death. Gonzalez is expected to appear before a judge sometime this week. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy has declared a national emergency when it comes to young people and mental health. Well, Pasco County Teen is working to break the stigma one podcast at a time. Eliza Smith, you see right here, she's just 16, but she said she struggles with her own mental health. That is why she started the Be Bold, Be Beautiful, Be You podcast. She hopes to spur more important conversations with teens about mental health. My mental health illness doesn't look the same for everybody, so tell me what it's like personally for you. A lot of people don't realize that younger kids, teenagers, um, adolescents, we can experience these things, and a lot of people tend to brush it aside. They certainly can experience them, especially during this pandemic. Advocacy groups are now calling for increased federal funding to help provide mental health resources to kids, teens, and families.